this is the May 16th, 2023 special meeting of the Montgomery Independent School District Board of Trustees. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, Ms. Alcantara, are there any public comments? There are no registered public comments, so the board will go into closed session as authorized under the Texas Open Meetings Act for the reasons listed on our agenda. We will return shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we're returning from closed session. There are no action items to take. For that reason, I'd like to adjourn the special meeting, the closed session meeting. This is the regular meeting of the Montgomery Independent School District Board of Trustees on November 17th. No, not November 17th. <laughs> wow. <laughs> May 16th, 2023. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Morrison, are there any special recognitions tonight? I think you can look out in our audience and the answer to that is probably yes. We are uh, really excited tonight to recognize uh, three different groups, uh, all amazing, all outstanding. And uh, to uh, do our special recognitions, I'm going to ask our Assistant Superintendent of Communications, Justin Marino, to come forward. Good evening, board. Uh, we have three groups that we'd like to recognize tonight. We have, we have some students and we have some outstanding employees that, who accomplished uh, quite the feat. Uh, yeah. I am actually married to an individual who accomplished what they did, and I, I know the time and effort it takes um, working weekends, on, take, taking time on Sunday to complete the Reading Academy. So I'd like to call up Danette Key and Elena Sin Simmonsma to uh, present our first special recognition. Good evening, MISD board members. My name is Danette Key. I'm the pre-K-5 elementary specialist, and this is my colleague, Elena Simensma. Good evening. I'm the Section 504 and Dyslexia Services Coordinator. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to express our sincere appreciation for what you have done in helping the teachers of Montgomery ISD fulfill a lofty requirement mandated by the Texas Education Agency. As many of you probably already know, House Bill 3 was passed by the 86th Texas Legislature in 2019, requiring each teacher and principal serving students in kindergarten through third grade to complete the Texas Reading Academies. Texas Reading Academy is a 60-hour course comprised of 12 modules, each ranging from three to nine hours of seat time. Districts had several options for meeting the TRA requirements. Montgomery ISD was one of only three districts in our region to offer teachers a comprehensive model, while many other districts chose the blended option, requiring participants to complete it on their own time. Your decision to approve funding from Montgomery ISD to run a comprehensive cohort from 2020 to 2023 has allowed us to train 181 classroom teachers, academic interventionists, dyslexia interventionists, and special education teachers in the science of reading. I cannot express the magnitude of the impact this has had on our teachers, our students, and our community. What some may not know 
is that my I, Montgomery ISD went above and beyond the requirements of the bill to assure that anyone working with a student from kindergarten through third grade had an understanding of the necessary skills required for learning to read. Montgomery ISD went above and beyond and set as requirement for all assistant principals, all academic interventionists, all dyslexia interventionists, and all in-class support to be completed to complete the Texas Reading Academy. Additionally, our very own Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, Ms. Carrie Fitzpatrick, has also completed the Reading Academy, working al alongside the teachers and principals she leads. She did begin the process as a requirement in her role as campus principal, and though she was not required to continue after being named Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, she made the decision to complete the course on her own time. This level of leadership under your unwavering commitment to our staff is one of the many reasons that teachers in Montgomery ISD feel supported and appreciated. There is solidarity in knowing that our leaders are willing to adhere to the same expectations because they value what is being asked of their teachers. Through your willingness to prioritize literacy for all students, Montgomery ISD has set themselves apart from the rest. Based on our teacher evaluations and the success of our implementation, Montgomery ISD has been called upon to train other cohort leaders across the state of Texas. In addition, beginning in fall of 2023, TEA is now requiring all cohorts to be led as comprehensive models. We are proud to set a standard of excellence in the training and support of teachers, not just in Montgomery ISD, but across the state. But why stop there? In March of 2022, my colleague, Elena Simensma, and I applied for the Texas Dyslexia Grant in which we were awarded $493,749 to increase our capacity to appropriately serve students with dyslexia and related reading disorders by providing high quality training to classroom teachers, administrators, and interventionists. Included in the grant were 35 seats in a Texas Reading Academy cohort. We had 22 fourth and fifth grade teachers enroll in the blended cohort that, last, that launched last June. The teachers volunteered agreeing to complete 44 hours of module work time on their own while simultaneously teaching full time and balancing the needs of their families. Some have never served in a K-3 classroom. Many are only math and science teachers. Some endured unexpected circumstances, yet they did not waver and persisted in completing what they started. Because of their commitment to kids, these teachers are equipped with a foundational knowledge of how students learn to read and what the science recommends when students struggle. In my opinion, these volunteers have stepped up and said, struggling readers are my concern too. I will be equipped to help them. I will be marketable to my administration knowing I now fulfill the requirement to serve in a K-3 classroom. You can depend on me. The Texas Reading Academies are grounded in the science of reading and the content is heavy. And it is with great pleasure that I am able to stand before you tonight to say thank you. Thank you on behalf of the 181 educators that were voluntold and to recognize those that volunteered. With us tonight are 11 of the fourth and fifth grade teachers that have completed the Texas Reading Academy requirements of their own free will. Please join me in celebrating Sarah Payne from Keenan Elementary. Come on up. <laughs> Kelly Dennison from Lone Star Elementary. <laughs> Tyler Kolak from Maidley Ranch Elementary. <laughs> Sarah Weehot from Montgomery Elementary. 
Amy Bynum from Montgomery Elementary. <laughs> Laurel Sparkman from Stewart Creek Elementary. <laughs> Angela Shiflett from Stewart Creek Elementary. <laughs> Kristen Stevenson from Montgomery Elementary. Michelle Knowlton from Maidley Ranch Elementary. <laughs> Heather Harrison from Maidley Ranch Elementary. <laughs> Stacy Keener from Montgomery Elementary. <laughs> Not with us tonight are April Hagen from Keenan, Abigail Potter from Keenan Elementary. Missy Brewer from Lone Star, Mandy Robbins from Lone Star, Heather Walker from Lone Star, Meredith Hull from Lone Star, Anna Sophia Smith from Lone Star, Jessica Stubbs from Maidley Ranch, Beth Ferguson from Maidley Ranch, and Stacy Ginn from Maidley Ranch, as well as Stephanie Eskew from Keenan Elementary. I want to say a sincere thank you to everything, uh, to everyone that took the extra time to do the Reading Academy. I know it's a labor of love and it's a uh, quite intensive training. So uh, your commitment to our kids' literacy and to our kids' reading is duly noted and greatly appreciated. So thank you all very much. Let's have one more round of applause for them. Lord, not only do I want to acknowledge the amazing educators that we recognize tonight, but uh, whether they were volunteering or voluntold, uh, the spirit, the attitude, the commitment of all of our educators who went through this program has been really amazing. And we have phenomenal uh, folks leading that training. And so we're very blessed to have uh, the individuals leading that training here in Montgomery ISD that we do. So very much thanks to everyone that went through this program and our amazing trainers. All right. I bet by Mr. Marino standing at the uh, podium, we have another special recognition. Yes, we have a group of students here, and I'd like to ask our Director of Career and Technical Education, Amy Vance, to introduce you to some special students. Good evening, everyone. Um, as many of y'all know, if you've seen it on social media or you have any... Um, personal connections in any of our CTE organizations. We are very busy in the springtime traveling, going to contests all over the state of Texas and even the nation. Um, so tonight I want to have a time to recognize all of our um, student organizations. In CTE, we call them career and technical student organizations. They're CTSOs. We don't have clubs, we have CTSOs. Our CTSOs are aligned with our curriculum. So the things we're learning in our classroom, the students get to take and go out and compete against other students from other schools on these skills for these technical organizations. Um, so they have lifelong learnings that they can take with them after high school when they're in these events. Um, so we have our state and national qualifiers. There's many that aren't even here that went to regionals and didn't make it. Um, our regional contests are huge from students all over the Houston area that go to the regional contest. So just to come here tonight is a great accomplishment, and I wish we could have even brought all the other ones that didn't make it to the state or national contest. So, um, and these teachers are gonna come up here and introduce their students. And if y'all don't mind teachers, when you introduce your students, have the students come up here to the front and stay so everyone will be up here at the end for a picture. 
Um, our first organization that we're gonna have is Montgomery High School, BPA, Miss Angela Wilcox and Emily Holiday. Good evening. I'm Angela Wilcox. This is my amazing co-sponsor, Emily Holiday. I couldn't do it without her. Any pictures you saw on social media were all because of Miss Holiday. Uh, but we started out with 14 students at our regional level where we competed against about 20 different um, high schools in our region. Out of those 14, we had nine that moved on to the state level where we competed in Dallas. And only the top four in each event move on from region to state. So they may be competing against 20 kids, but they have to, to make it in the top four. At the state level, only the top three or the top five, depending on what kind of event they're in, move on to the national level. And of our nine that competed at state, we had six move on to the national level. So in, we competed in Anaheim, California. So we are super excited. Um, unfortunately, only three of our students were able to make it tonight, but we have Zach Zimney and Gabriel Colson. <laughs> They were part of our software engineering team and they were part of a virtual event where they were competing against, I think there were 30, there were 30 different teams from the, from the nation that were competed and only the top 10 were invited to nationals and they were top 10. They were also fourth place is what they finished up with. And then we also have Isabel Westlake, and she competed at the state level at health administration procedures, and at the regional level, she placed first in our regional level. So we are super proud of them, and we're also excited. We only have two, only two of our competitors are seniors, so we're super excited that all of them are, almost all of them are coming back, and we expect to be at nationals again next year too. So thank you all for your support as well. Up, up next, we have Molly Atterbury and Jim Marshall from Lake Creek High School, BPA. Well, we're fairly new. Uh, we just started this competition for the first time this year. And to our amazement, we took about a half a dozen kids and we went on to the next round with Natalie Ling. She was our sponsor for the state competition. And she surprised us again and went on to nationals, went to California. So uh, first year we learned a lot. We had about a half a dozen kids. One of them kept on going, so she set the standard high. So next year we hope to have a whole lot more going further. Up next, we're going to have Montgomery High School, our VEX Robotics team. Um, our sponsors are Jennifer Duffer and Russell Reed. Good evening. First of all, we want to thank you so much for all of your support that you've always given us. And a quick moment to thank Russell Reed, who has taken charge of the M Montgomery High School Robotics Program this year, and even more thankful that he's let me kind of tag along and help him out um, another year. So our regular season for robotics is runs from October through February, but the design process begins the May prior, and there's many iterations of the robot during that time. Our teams compete in six regular season competitions, and um, during that time, they've earned quite a bit of awards. Boy Oh Boy, which is our team of Tyler Martillon, we have Reagan Johnson and Cooper Francis that could not be here with us. They were a new team this year and they've shown tre tremendous growth and perseverance. This team was the first team of the season to bring home a tournament champion trophy, which qualified them for the U VEX UIL 5A State Championship and the VEX Regional Championship. <coughs> the Space Chickens this year, made up of Logan Collier, Emily Milhausen, and Dallas Copeland, they focus on their engineering notebook this year and their judges interviews, which helped them earn a judges award, design award, two excellence awards, and they also brought home a skills champion and tournament champion trophy for, uh, for their programming and the driving of their robot. 
As both teams advanced, they partnered up, um, and they are your 5A UIL runner-up for 2023. And this also qualified them for the VEX Robotics World Competition, which has 800 teams um, from all over the world. There's about 50 countries that are represented at this competition. Both teams competed well, and our Space Chickens, again, brought home an award. And of all the ones that they earned, this is the one that makes us the most proud. Um, me, personally, very proud of them for this one. They received the VEX World's Competition Sportsmanship Award, and this award recognizes a team that is courteous, helpful, and respectful to everyone, acts with honesty and integrity, and demonstrates effective communication skills, teamwork, professionalism, and a student-centered ethos during their interview with the judges. We're very proud of both teams for their hard work, grit, and demonstrating what it means to be Premier Montgomery ISD students. Up next, we have our Lake Creek High School Robotics team. Um, our sponsors are Eric Moons and Mr. David Herman. So exactly what Ms. Duffer said, we go through the exact same stuff every year. We go to, we go to multiple competitions. Um, luckily, we go to different competitions sometimes because um, at these different competitions, it's either Montgomery us, we're usually in the top, and we're the people to beat. Um, they ended up with a couple going to Worlds. We ended up with four, but these guys aren't, rep they're representing us, but not everybody's here today. So team, let's see, 2854W. Y'all are uh, Rhett Dennis, Bra uh, Braden Adams, and Nathan Weber, and who is missing? Oh, and Connor Trogett, uh, he's, he's not gonna be here today. Uh, team 2854Z, um, he is the loner today. Nobody else showed up, they all ditched him. Uh, that's, <laughs> um, so who's, uh, oh, that's it, right? Okay, all right, and then 2854, T, uh, go, go, go ahead and introduce yourselves. And I missed Lane Jefferson, so, sorry. And then 2854V, um, Colby Greer, and then we have um, Julie Moons and Carson Wyda that could not be here. Oh, potential spam, all right, excellent. Um, so 2854V, uh, they ended up at early in the season, a tournament finalist, uh, which got them into the UI championship, and they were a robot skills champion at that tournament as well. Uh, 2854W, you guys at the uh, Texas High School Region 3 championship were tournament finalists, which got them into Worlds. Uh, what do we got? Uh, T, they won lots of stuff. They won a robot skills champion, tournament champion, robot skills champion again, tournament finalists, tournament semifinalists, um, and then Z were tournament finalists at the uh, Region 3 championship as well, and second place in skills. I think Z, y'all ended up second in the region in skills, so that was, that was really good. And out of the 168 teams, we had four in the top 20 in skills, and then you guys were also two. So we had six of the top 20 teams in the region for skills, so that was really good. Um, and that is that's all I got. Up next, we'll have our FCCLA from Lake Creek High School. Um, we have three sponsors. We have Lindsay Duke, Marie Villa, and Miss Angela Alvarez. Miss Angela Alvarez is here tonight to introduce her students, so y'all come on up. FCCLA stands for Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. It's a student-led organization with family consumer science courses. The students focus on leadership, community service, and advancing their knowledge and skills in FCS program areas, including education, fashion, interior design, culinary, and hospitality. 
Students have the opportunity to win scholarships and gain knowledge and skills for college and the workforce. Students have the opportunity to participate in the region competition where we had 12 students compete. Um, nine advanced to state. Uh, we had three students place at state. Uh, one group who will compete at nationals this summer uh, will be in Denver. And then here, though, we have Kimberly Boyd, who competed in career investigation. Uh, Abby McKenzie, who competed in focus on children. We have, Abby is not here. We have Abby Carswell, Kennedy Wells, and Bree Ballard, who competed in repurpose and redesign and placed first in the state and will be competing at nationals this summer. Is FCCLA from MHS here? Anyone? Okay. They could not be here, but um, they had a team as well go to state. Um, up next, we're going to have our um, FFA advisor from Montgomery High School, Miss Katie Garza. I'll go ahead and call each one of my horse judging teams. Girls up here. I'm going to start with Braley Dyer, <laughs> Ellie Steele, Cadence Fitzgerald, and Kennedy Stanley. I want to thank every single person in this room for giving these girls the recognition that they deserve. They have worked really, really hard this season to continue their streak of going to state for a second year in a row. Um, each of these girls are not only exemplary students in the classroom, but they really, really do enjoy what they're doing and they put their all into what they do. Um, their busy season started back in December um, at their first contest in College Station where Braley was able to bring home a $1,000 scholarship and <laughs> these girls set the bar high as a second place team at that contest and continued that streak throughout their season. Um, I am incredibly proud of you for, for doing what you did this season. And uh, it took a lot of miles. We traveled a long way all over the state of Texas. Uh, went to a lot of contests where you guys placed in the top quarter of almost every contest that you went to. And then, of course, made it to state in Lubbock where you brought home your ninth in state trophy. And I am just so incredibly proud of you all. Up next, if we could have our three Lake Creek High School FFA advisors come up and introduce their teams. I'll go ahead and start since we're also a state horse judging team. Um, they placed first in area and out of 33 teams, and there are 508 horse judging teams in the state of Texas this year, and they placed 33rd in the state this year. I had two seniors, two are graduating, one freshman and one junior, so we'll have two returning and hope to repeat again for the fourth year in a row. So I'm very proud of my girls. Thank you. All right, guys, I got uh, all four of my girls here. We got Brooklyn, uh, Casey, Lauren, and Peyton. This is our first year doing uh, milk quality at Lake Creek High School, and they all kind of looked at me and was like, well, are we really doing this? Because two of the girls have not your traditional ag kids, and so they signed up for FA in the spring, and uh, we started the contest and going and tasting milk and cheese, and uh, we did pretty good this year, I ain't going to lie. Um, and so at area, there was 18 teams in our area that competed, and we were third, third place at area. We had a third place individual overall, an 18th place overall, and a 25th place overall as well on the individual side. And so we went to state. Like I said, it was our first time ever going to state um, in the second team in CDE's uh, history at the school to make it to state as well. And we didn't do as good as we thought we would do at state, but all the girls are returning next year, and uh, hopefully we can uh, do a lot better next year because only the top one team advances out of state to nationals, and that's our goal next year. Thank you all. Up
up next, we have Lake Creek High School. Um, Miss Dina Stanger is going to come up and introduce their HOSA. Good evening. As you know, or you don't know, HOSA is a global state-led organization by the U.S. Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Resources and several funded state and local agencies. HOSA's mission is to empower HOSA future health professionals to become leaders in global health communities through education, collaboration, and experience. Texas HOSA is the largest state HOSA organization in the world. This was our first year at Lake Creek to have our first HOSA chapter. We have approximately 75 members and our numbers continue to grow. This was our first year. We were excited and thrilled because one of our members, Ren Freeman, competed at regionals in extraneous writing. She placed third, which led her to advance to state. Unfortunately, Ren could not be here with us tonight. I have with me tonight, I have Huntley Jett, who went to regionals. I have Maggie Sexton, who competed at regionals in uh, home health, home aid services, excuse me, um, and she placed fourth. Wren competed at state. She competed uh, with approximately 400 other students from the state of Texas, and we are very proud of her and Huntley's and Maggie's accomplishments. Thank you. Can you scoot, scoot in just a little bit more to close that gap? No, you guys are fine. Just the two on the end. Okay. One, two, three. Thank you. Uh, one second. If we have any parents that are here tonight, could you come up so we can get you uh, with your kids? Right. That's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse you. Okay, girls in the front, you might need to, like, really... To make room for your parents. I don't know if I'm pretty sure. Some comments, but it looks like they're leaving. Yeah. Thank you, folks. Uh, to the students, real quick, to the students, I want to say uh, from for our CTSO students, later tonight we're going to be discussing uh, our district's culture creed and on your individual and respective campuses and in your organizations. And in fact, any organizations that y'all are a part of in the future. 
you as leaders will set the tone and tenor of that organization, and you've done that very well in your, in your schools and on your campuses. So thank you all for being good kids, good leaders, strong leaders, and for Kate making sure that you bring everyone along together. So thank you very much. Dr. Fuller, just to add to that, it is so amazing to recognize the student accomplishments and leaderships in these various organizations, uh, but it's so important to recognize the amazing parents that give so many hours to support these amazing students and the incredible teachers that we have in our CTE programs. Uh, it is truly a labor of love, and, uh, and the accomplishments of our students uh, happen with caring, uh, guiding hands, and support from their parents and their and their teachers. So let's give our parents and teachers a huge round of applause. Too. And he's back at the podium again, Mr. Marino. I bet there's more. For our third and final recognition tonight, I'd like to ask the leader of our Bears and Lions, Mr. Hollander and Mr. Williams, to uh, lead the special recognition. Good evening. I think it's actually Cooper. So here's the thing. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Williams go first because he uh, had a rough day today, came in behind the Bears and ladies golf at State. So I figured he <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to talk about baseball and softball still in the playoffs. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, was that on? Did I say that out loud? <laughs> I think you learned a valuable lesson there, Mr. Hollander. Uh, so I'm going to talk just a second um, about, um, I'm going to introduce our salutatorian and our valedictorian. If y'all want to stand up here so everybody can see y'all. Uh, I'm going to talk about Jada. Throughout her high school career, she was on varsity track her freshman and senior year. Played soccer, was manager for both Lake Creek girls and boys soccer programs junior and senior year. Heavily involved in student council all four years. Held positions of freshman class president, social coordinator, active member of the National Honor Society and the Spanish Honor Society, uh, being elected as president her senior year. Uh, also a member of Mu Alpha Theta, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, her favorite organization though, the Hacky Sack Club. Uh, Jada earned her track, academic student council letterman. Jada received the honor of AP Scholar with distinction, principal honor roll for 4.0 GPA along with National African American Recognition Award, National Hispanic Recognition Award, National Rural and Small Town Award from the College Board. She's going to be attending Texas A&M University and has received the National Recognition Scholarship, Lechner Scholarship, and the Texas A&M Tuition Support Award. She's going to be majoring in molecular and cell biology in hopes of becoming an optometrist. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Klein, and then there's something that's off the script that's more, I think, personal about both of them that's, that, that highlights them and their character. Um, Klein, during his time at Lake Creek, achieved many accomplishments, including recognition as a commended student in the National Merit Scholars Program, earning the title of AP Scholar with Distinction, receiving the College Board's Rural and Small Town Recognition Award, being on the uh, Principal's Distinguished Honor Roll, and being a member of several prestigious organizations such as the National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, UIL Academics, the Superintendent's Leadership Council, and the Next Generation Leadership. Additionally, Klein's been proud to serve as the 22-23 Student Body President and the award-winning Lake Creek Student Council. Despite all these achievements, Klein's proudest accomplishment has been his ability to always find the perfect pair of socks for any occasion. <laughs> <coughs> In the fall, Klein will be attending the University of Texas at Austin to pursue a dual degree in the Plan 2 Honors Program and the Canfield Business Honors Program. Uh, for Klein, yes. Uh, most importantly, I mean, me personally, the, the hacky sack comment and the, and, the, and the socks comment and just the smiles on their faces all the time. Uh, any practice we've done at school where we recognize valedictorian, salutatorian, there's always the elbow bump between the two of them, uh, the high five. Uh, but that, to me, um, highlights not just them, but I think uh, what their leadership in, in our campus over all of our students and what we want to see 
just overwhelmed with all of our students, the, the competition of to be better than the other, uh, but then the friendship uh, to support each other along the way. So both uh, Klein and Jada, congratulations in representing us and your accomplishments with that. All right, well, you might as well come up, make it less awkward. Um, so here's the good news. I would love to be introducing both of mine. Uh, and I'll kick it off with our salutatorian, Cole Haynes. He's not here because, of course, he's busy at UIL Academic State competing in social studies. So <laughs> he is out there employing his incredible intelligence this evening and for the next couple of days. So uh, a little bit about him. He says the best thing about education has been his lifelong friendships and he's, that he's made while surrounded by supportive, encouraging teachers in MISD across every single grade level. His accomplishments include being a founding member of the, M NH the MHS Chess Club, qualifying for nationals the last two years with the BPA, where he competes on the software and engineering team and in digital, digital media production, as well as being a four-year cross-country student athlete. It's pretty incredible, his dedication, and it will show because he is headed next year to Yale University. So congratulations to Cole Haynes. and to our valedictorian, Charlie Wernley. Besides being another founding member of the chess club, which I think tells you something about their passions and tells you something about the game of chess, Charlie's proudest moments include teaching herself to play guitar and uh, like a true soccer player, battling through four knee procedures during her time as a student athlete. She has been involved in just about every academic service organization that we have to offer but learned a lot from her time in the Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce, Next Generation Leadership Program for which she was selected this year. Charlie is also a first year college student, or first generation college student. Being a first, year, a first generation college student is hard enough, but also where she's chosen to attend is going to level up and just shows you the dedication that she has because next year she'll be attending Brown University. Congratulations, Charlie. Principals, will you be in this photo, please? With him? like, no, I'm good. All right. We've got parents, parents, some squeeze in just a little. Perfect. There we go. Ready? One, two, three. Little Mr. Williams. To the parents, uh, I want to echo what Dr. Morrison said earlier, but for our parents with our valedictorians and salutatorians, 
Thank you for raising great kids and for doing all that you've done in the past few years. Now to the valedictorian and salutatorian, there are still a few days left of school, so let's not do anything to screw it up now. Um, but we look forward to seeing you at graduation and having some awesome speeches ready. So thank you all again. I believe that's it for special recognitions. That is it, for, unless you want to do some more. No, we're good. Right. We're good. <laughs> Um, there are a few registered public comments, if you'll give me just a second to get my act together. Um, just as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, um, there, uh, thank you for registering to speak tonight to the board this evening. Um, so that everyone has an opportunity to speak, we ask that you limit your time to three minutes. Um, there are a limited number of instances in which we can respond as board members. We cannot take votes based upon public comments. and. Folks, we, uh, we are basically allowed to acknowledge your comment and move on in the next con set of comments. So I ask that you please keep your comments respectful. I want to remind you that we are not permitted to, spe to discuss specific students, staff members, other than your own children um, or during public comments. So please refrain from referring to other people by name in your comments. Um, are we ready with the timer? We'll get there. I will go ahead and call our first speaker. Ms. Jenny Drood of Montgomery, Texas. Ms. Teal, I'll take care of the timer tonight. Good evening. I would first like to thank our teachers for another wonderful school year. The work they do, uh, they work so incredibly hard to provide a safe learning environment for all the students at MISD. They not only make them feel safe physically, but emotionally. Because this board and our superintendent pride themselves on being transparent, I would also like to do the same as I give you a synopsis of how this school year has been for my children. My youngest son is in first grade. His teacher is incredible. He is reading well above his age. He can do mental math quickly. He loves learning more than ever. This past weekend, he decided he wanted to research roly-polies and make a presentation to teach the family about them. I owe all of this to his teacher. When he is at school, he feels safe, important, and loved. His teacher and principal make him feel that way, and I love that. My daughter is in sixth grade. She's had, an incre she's had incredible teachers this year as well. She enjoys choir, theater, and any time she is encouraged to do creative writing. This last semester has been a struggle though. As you know, she spoke a few months ago at a school board meeting about an inappropriate conversation she was forced to have with the school counselor about her sexuality. I sat down with two district employees. I was asked, what do you want? I told them I wanted training for all employees regarding LGBTQ students, and I wanted them to treat those students fairly regardless of their own personal beliefs. I also said I wanted an apology for my daughter. I was told an investigation was done and the counselor was not at fault. I found this shocking because no one interviewed my daughter. My daughter requested a meeting with these two employees and, I was told, and we were told no. We both questioned how an investigation could be complete if both parties have not been spoken to. My daughter has since been bullied every day by the students at her school. They say things like, hey, you wanna go to church with me? Oh wait, you can't, you're gay and we're supposed to hate you. Or do you tear up Bibles for fun? We are a Christian family, but we also support anyone in the LGBTQ plus community. My daughter had a recent situation where multiple students bullied her during class. I was hesitant to call the school because of an email I received from Dr. Fuller on behalf of the school board. He said, quote, the district investigated your issue and found the employee acted appropriately and well within their obligations and responsibilities in their official capacity. And in my opinion, knowing all that I know, about the situation made the right call. Well, I did call the school and was pleasantly surprised that the assistant principal and her teacher do not support bullying or discrimination against students who are in that community. They did a full investigation and resolved the issue. I would also like to make something crystal clear. I have never ever demanded an employee to be fired or quote, that the district take punitive disciplinary action actions. I have always advocated for training and further education. Dr. Morrison can attest to this per our meeting in 2021. My son is in eighth grade and he has had one of the best school years yet. His teachers tell me they love having him in class and that he is, uh, and that is something that warms my heart because he is differently abled. 
He has really stepped out of his comfort zone in theater class and can't get enough of his business class. I love that all the principals at his school treat him with respect and make him feel safe and important. When we went to court for the student who recorded my son in the bathroom without his consent last year, we were One disappointed minute. that multiple students who shared the video with other students did not receive consequences. The county attorney told us that no other names were turned in, even though I was told by an MISD officer that many students had shared it and saw it on a Snapchat group. My hope is that in the future, MISD will not ignore or condone the sharing of child sex abuse material. I would also like to end that with this. Pointing out injustices is not, to quote Dr. Fuller, causing drama. If you seek to be a district, uh, premier district, then you need to be transparent in the good, the bad, and the discriminatory. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Shannon Reed of Montgomery, Texas. Good evening, board. I'm Shannon Reed, director of Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce, and thank you for allowing me to speak tonight on behalf of the culture creed that you have in your agenda that you'll be reviewing later this evening. <clears throat> I was reading a recent survey of 200 companies across the U.S. suggesting that those companies that intentionally manage their culture significantly increase their revenue by 682% compared to the average of 166% for those businesses who did not. And likewise, businesses that uh, also intentionally managed their culture uh, saw a net increase, a net increase of income by 756% compared to just 1% for those who did not. This survey also summarized um, this quote, engaged managers and employees are much more likely to remain in the organization, leading directly to fewer hires from outside the organization. This results in lower recruiting, hiring, training costs, and higher productivity. Higher employee continuity leads to better customer relationships that contribute to greater customer loyalty, lower marketing cost, and enhanced sales. Now, here at the chamber, we spend a lot of time talking about and working on the concept of culture for our businesses and how it directly relates to the success of their bottom line. But we really believe that this is a transferable concept across the whole community, something that we want to see in our businesses, that we set the tone and support efforts across Montgomery, Montgomery ISD is included in that, to promote a culture of respect within our, our community. One minute. Over the past year, I've had the pleasure of working with a group of community leaders alongside MISD to tackle this issue and put forth the culture creed that you're reviewing for adoption tonight. We believe this is a clear first step in establishing the culture that we want to emulate across Montgomery. As we continue to see the growth and welcome in new residents in the coming years, this culture creed will set the tone for the way Montgomery does business and how Montgomery ISD interacts with our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. All right, and next up, Brent Parker of Montgomery, Texas. Dr. Morrison and board, I have one of these things at the back of my church and I don't really pay a lot of attention to it either. <laughs> But I'll try to keep it, keep it short. You don't give a, pre a preacher three minutes. Um, they expect a lot out of him. In our church, we, um, every time we gather, at the end of our time together, we, we all stand together and we profess these words of how we're going to live together and in our community. And they go, wherever you go, whomever you meet, remember to be kind and gentle and thoughtful and gracious. For we do not know the burdens that others may bear in their hearts, in their minds, or in their bodies. And as much as I'd love to think that we could mandate that the hundreds of people who hear that and or recite that each week would live those things out, um, we just keep at it. Every time we gather, repeating and reminding ourselves of how we're to live in this community. Uh, 
Dr. Morrison, you've said in faith leader meetings that I've attended uh, over the last couple of years uh, that you are depending on the faith leaders uh, to help the district to create an environment where folks are a little slower to go to their Facebook or their social media to comment uh, about the things that are making them upset, to have civil discourse on social media. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, as one of the pastors representing faith communities in this, in this area, we need you and the schools and the employees, the teachers, the folks who spend much more time with members of our community than the <coughs> pastors do to help create this similar culture. I don't think it takes a lot of encouragement for you when you read the culture creed to, to read it and immediately seek to adopt it. And so that's what I'd ask on behalf of the faith communities around here, that you would take the time uh, to read through it, uh, not only to adopt it, uh, so that our students, our faculty, staff, and other members of this community could buy in, um, but this we might create intentionally a culture of kindness, respect, dignity for all persons, the, the kind of dignity that we're seeking for this young lady as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that is all the registered public speakers tonight. Thank you for coming to the board this evening. Uh, next, folks, we are moving on to election items. It's that time of year. And so as our first uh, item for business, we have to canvas the results of the election. And so I have here the election results from this past May 6, 2023 election. I'd like to read them aloud. Eddie Wynn, grand total of 512 votes, of which early voting was 373, absentee was 10, election and election day was 129. Mike Hopkins, the grand total of 301 votes, of which 173 were early voting, 26 were absentee, and 102 were election day votes. Sean Dennison was uncontested, 675 votes total, of which 449 were early voting, 32 were absentee, and 194 were election day votes. Lori Turner, uncontested, uh, 676 votes. Early voting was 451, absentee was, three, was 31, and election day was 194. Brother, I think we missed the grand total for Ms. Turner again. Can you say that again? I think there was a... Uh, seven, or 676. Okay. Um, I missed it. I'm sorry. I see what you did, Morrison. I was just <laughs> clarifying the record, Dr. Fuller. Would you like to comment, Mr. Dennison? <laughs> I changed my vote, so she'd win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, is there a motion to certify z these results from the May 6, 2023 election? I'll make a motion to certify the results. And is there a second? Mr. Kirby, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstained. Those results are certified. With that, um, Mr. Hopkins, um, you have served on this board since November of 2020. And um, in that time, I've gotten to know you. Um, I know your passion for students. I know your heart. Um, it has been my pleasure to get to know you, not just as a board member, but as a friend. And I um, have come to respect your positions. Um, I hope that you will not be a stranger to this school district, for you've left an indelible mark on our, our campuses. And I am, I'm deeply appreciative of the time that you gave. With that, um, the board has gotten you a little something. I, I've actually gotten you a little something as well. I've gotten all the board members a book, but uh, in front of yours, I wrote a special note, and I hope you'll take some time and, and think over it and reflect on it. Thank you. But with that, we have a, uh, we have a plaque that we'd like to present to you, Mr. Hopkins. And it actually, let me get the microphone. <laughs> it reads, in appreciation of Mike Hopkins for dedicated service to the district student, staff, and patrons, while serving on the Board of Trustees November 2020 through May 2023. And I want y'all to reflect on those dates and all of the things that uh, school boards across America, but especially in Texas and in this town, have had to deal with. And you've been right in the thick of it. And um, you'll understand that saying when you read the book, okay? So, Mr. Hopkins, thank you.
Dr. Fuller, while you were coming back to the dais, I just want to um, honor Mr. Hopkins. And he really reflects what is so amazing about this community. Uh, across the country, so many individuals run for school board for very different reasons, uh, but not always for what's best for teaching, learning, and kids. And what is truly amazing about Montgomery is that this community seeks only to put people on a school board that think about teaching, learning, and kids. And uh, that is true with our newest soon-to-be board member, and Mr. Eddie Wynn, and it has definitely been true with Mr. Michael Hopkins. And so on behalf of close to 10,000 students, 1,200 employees, you have a very grateful community and a very grateful school district and a very grateful superintendent for your service. Thank you. Thank you. One last time, Mr. Hopkins, the floor is yours. Uh, so um, I'd love to give you a 12-page speech that's going to last about an hour, but I can't, um, and I won't. <laughs> but um, in the Air Force, we, we had a saying for these sort of things that hang on walls, and, and we always made fun of um, folks. We called them, I love me walls. But I love this district, and, um, and I love the community. Um, it's been my honor um, and my privilege to serve every one of you. Um, I think if you look at school boards across the country, there are so many challenges, and you don't have that here. Um, we've got a police officer on the school board. We have a real estate agent and community member who was cooking crawfish for the cheer team the other night. We have a retired school teacher who still still works out in the community and substitutes. We have a um, we have a beekeeper slash um, uh, professor slash uh, school board president that's reading to our kids actively weekly in our schools and, and working with, with our kids and, and handling bees. I'd love to handle bees with you, but I'm, that might be dangerous for me. But, um, but uh, we, have a, we, have a ser we have servant leaders on our board. Lori Turner, um, school teacher. Um, Nate Robb, and heavily involved in the FFA and the community. Um, and, and I have as well. But um, I want you to know that also you have a remarkable superintendent, a nationally ranked superintendent um, that is a remarkable person that has um, done a lot of things um, to change this district um, and to do things that um, are making us a premier district and have created an environment where an A-rated district. But I think the most important thing for me is to be able to serve um, the rock star staff that we have as administrators um, and teachers and our kids. Um, we truly have a remarkable community. Um, one other thing is school boards across the country are challenged with people that do run for school boards for the wrong reasons. Um, I got to know Eddie Wynn, um, sitting out there getting sunburnt and lips cracked and all kinds of stuff for, for a week. Um, not only is he a servant leader, he's a remarkable person as well, and his heart's in the right place. So this district is moving in the right direction with the right people on the board. And Eddie, I welcome you. I'm cheering for you. I'm cheering for the board, and I'm cheering for this district. So thank you. It's been my honor and my privilege. Another elected official in the house. Um, thank you for thank you. First of all, Mr. Hopkins, I want to acknowledge those words. We have another elected official in the house who's been very patient with us tonight, Judge. <laughs> thank you very much, um, Judge Phil Grant, to administer the the oath of office for Mr. Wynn. Mr. Wynn, I'll invite you to come up. That is correct. Thank you, Judge. You're you're. One step ahead, Sean and Lori. <laughs> All three of them going at the same time. Oh, okay. I have a big mouth. I thought I was going to be loud enough. All right. Uh, if you would, for me, raise your right hands. I state your name, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of Montgomery ISD Board of Trustee of the state of Texas and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend 
the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state. So help me God. Congratulations. Can I just say really quickly that uh, it's such an honor to be asked to do this. You know, I cannot think of a more important position for people in our community to run for, especially in today's time. Uh, God bless y'all for what you do, and thank you for having me out here tonight. Thank you, Judge. And for the record, I've signed the certification of election. Um, Judge, can we get a, some pictures with your, you and our newly sworn in board members? And then, Eddie, if we can get it, um, Mr. Wynn, if we can get some pictures of you and your family and the judge, that would be great. coming up or just them? We're getting out of the way. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, um, folks, I'm going to do one thing slightly out of order. On the agenda, it says reorganization of board officers. We will do that after we do item 5E. Before us is the board member's ethics statement that we have adopted as a district. Um, and I have asked each board member to review a section of this, um, a section of this document and read it aloud. And so I'll start by, and then I'll ask uh, Mr. Dennison to start over here with the first section, if you don't mind. <clears throat> I will be fair, just, and impartial in all my decisions and actions. I will accord others the respect I wish myself. I will encourage expressions of different opinions and listen with an open mind to others' ideas. Trustworthiness. Trustworthiness and stewardship. I will be accountable to the public by representing district policies, programs, priorities, and progress accurately. I will be responsive to the community by seeking its involvement in district affairs and by communicating its priorities and concerns. I will work to ensure prudent and accountable use of district resources. I will make no personal promise or take private action that may comp compromise my performance or my responsibilities. Honor and conduct. I will tell the truth. I will share my views while working for consensus. I will respect the majority decision as the decision of the board. I will base my decisions in, on fact rather than supposition, opinion, or public favor. Ms. Turner. Integrity of character. I will refuse to surrender judgment to any individual to, uh, or group at the expense of the district as a whole. I will consistently uphold all applicable laws, rules, policies, and governance procedures. I will not disclose information that is confidential by law or that uh, will needlessly harm the district if disclosed. Commitment to serve. I will focus my attention on fulfilling the board's responsibilities of goal setting, policy making, and evaluation. I will dil diligently prepare for and attend board meetings. I will avoid personal involvement in activities the board has delegated as uh, delegated to the superintendent. I will seek Continuing education that will enhance my ability to fulfill my duties effectively. 
student-centered focus. I will continuously guide by what is best for all students of the district. Folks, uh, it has been jokingly referred to as our marriage vows. These have been jokingly referred to as our marriage vows that we need to renew every once in a while. But uh, this is something that I think we should all keep in mind. Our, our code of ethics guides us. And so every year I ask that we, uh, when we, redo, we renew these vows, so to speak, um, and commit once again to each other and to the folks that we are entrusted with the care of this district. So thank you, board members. For that reason, folks, we will now go into closed session to reorganize the board officers. We will be back shortly. We are returning from closed session. Um, the board has reorganized the officers, and uh, we would like to hear nominations for a president of the board. Are there any nominations? I would like to nominate Ms. Lori Turner for president of MISD School Board. And I'd like to second that, so Mr. Kirby, Mr. Fuller. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries unanimously. President Turner, congratulations. The hot seat is yours. <laughs> the passing of the gavel. <laughs> Okay, before we move on, I just want to say thank you so much um, for this honor. Um, it is a very big deal, and with lots of prayer, we will continue on at, uh, towards our pathway to premiere. And before moving on from, from this point, I would like to say thank you so much for the last two and a half years that Dr. Fuller has led our district um, through um, the pandemic through, uh, <laughs> Those are fun days. <laughs> That's been a while. That was that was a hard time. Masks and no masks, and um, and from from there we've done so many, accomplished so many things as a team, and we thank you so much for your leadership. Um, there's a lot of ways to describe you, as Mike had already said: beekeeper, kind of a farmer, doctor, um, professor, um, but without a doubt, you are a servant leader. And we thank you so much for what you've done over the last two and a half years. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'd like to tag along on that if you don't mind, uh, Ms. Turner. Um, I've been on the board for uh, eight going on nine years and served. And we've had multiple presidents uh, come and go. And it's, it's not an easy position. But before uh, Matt Fuller became president, I didn't know what it meant to be a president of a school board. The ones before, that they were good leaders, uh, but went through the motions a lot. And, and what Matt did... His ability to get people uh, gathered together, galvanized, unified. Um, even he and I, when we started our relationship, it would, uh, tumultuous would be a, a fair word. Uh, we worked through that out of mutual respect for one another. And he never, he never forced any opinions on anyone. He, uh, he was very honest, uh, lots of integrity. I'm happy to have served with him. Um, we have, uh, we've become a long way in the last two and a half years as a board because of you and your leadership and your relationship with Dr. Morrison and the conduit that you, uh, you give us to, to get to him. And uh, we thank you for that. I personally thank you for that. And I know the board thanks you for that. And uh, the district is uh, lucky to have had you for the past few years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to say it's been an honor serving as president with y'all. Um, you know, I'm not resigning from the board. Still be very active. We'll help in any way, shape, and possible. Uh, 
look forward to what's next for our, our board and our district under uh, President Turner's leadership. And, you know, I just I look forward to also turning my phone off every once in a while and, and resting and relaxing and restoring just a little bit as well. So with that, uh, I want to thank you all, and we look forward to uh, the coming years ahead. So you've done a mighty fine job. Thank you. All right, moving on with nominations. Is there a nomination for the Office of Vice President? I'd like to nominate Nate Robb. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries. Um, then there is secretary. Is there a nomination for the Office of Secretary? I'd like to nominate Linda Porton. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. All right. Thank you so much to everyone. And thank you, Linda, for continuing your service as secretary. And thank you, Nate, for helping to lead us in the future. Um, moving on to consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull any items from the consent agenda for discussion? Is there a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Um, moving on to action items. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Thank you, President Turner. Uh, I'm going to ask Chris Lynn, our uh, assistant superintendent of just operations now, but operations, pretty big deal with a bond. And it's very exciting tonight for us to be able to move forward in our commitments to this community with our bond projects. And so we're talking about guaranteed maximum pricing at Creekside and Lake Creek High School. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. Uh, President Turner and members of the board, uh, good evening. It is my pleasure this evening to be here uh, and to be recommending a guaranteed maximum price uh, for the construction of Creekside Elementary and the addition to Lake Creek High School. Um, just a little brief history. Um, remember, uh, the district went through uh, an RFQ process uh, to select a construction manager at risk. Um, through that process, uh, the district chose Pogue Construction um, to be that CM at risk. Um, they are the ones who are actually responsible for um, bidding this project out and identifying the subcontractors. And so these bids were due uh, April 18th and April 19th. Uh, I will say that um, sometimes throughout the bid process you get numbers that you like and sometimes you get numbers that you don't. Um, and we had a little bit of a mixed bag uh, of numbers. And so uh, we have spent the last month uh, diligently working um, to get the best deal that we could for on behalf of this school district. And personally, I want to extend my sincerest gratitude uh, to Pogue Construction um, and members of their team for all of the uh, numerous hours that they put into uh, helping us get to where we are tonight. Um, in addition, I want to thank uh, the other team members, uh, Huckabee Architects, and all of their consultants that work for them, um, LTY Engineers, Matrix, um, the whole group um, that sometimes spent till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning uh, working on numbers and, and talking to subcontractors and really getting this project uh, back in line. And so, um, as I said, my sincerest gratitude and appreciation to all members uh, of this team throughout this journey. Mr. Lynn, I just want to echo uh, those sentiments. Uh, having come back into the uh, public sector, superintendent leaving the private sector, uh, I will often say I, I differentiate vendors from partners because uh, vendors are people that want to sell you something and they don't always care if they're going to be back for your second sale. Partners are people that want to come back and have your business and so they do everything they can to support you and they're not hard to find when there are challenges. Uh, I cannot echo enough your comments about Pogue and Huckabee uh, from the very top. Our conversations with the individuals who lead those organizations to the people that are working directly with us. Uh, we want to thank you for your servant leadership. 
Um, and I certainly don't want to forget, uh, you know, subcontractors. There's a lot of subs that have been involved in this process and have uh, had to re re revise and review their numbers on multiple occasions. And so it really does take uh, the entire team effort. And that's what's so great about this CM at risk process. Um, so just to recap, um, our construction budget for these two projects was $55.7 million. Uh, this board had already approved a couple of early packages. Um, one was for the uh, parking lot addition at Lake Creek. Um, and then we also did some electrical and generator and um, HVAC work for Creekside. And so that totaled $2.5 million. Um, so after that early package, our budget was $53.1 million. Um, I'm happy this evening, I'm ecstatic actually, to be able to present to you a guaranteed maximum price uh, of $51,767,000, um, which is $1.3 million under budget um, for both of these projects. And that includes the addition of an additional parking lot at Lake Creek High School um, just over $800,000 in cost associated with that. So um, without that, these projects would have been in excess of $2 million under budget. Um, and so that's why I am thankful for the efforts and the, and the teamwork um, from everybody to get us um, to this point and to get this bond program started on the right foot. Um, remember that these savings um, don't go into the district bank account. Remember, these are all bond funds. And so these savings will be utilized throughout all of the upcoming bond projects to either enhance, um, modify, uh, improve, or do additional things that maybe we may not have been able to do without these savings. So um, that's why it's so important to get off to a good start. And so um, this evening, it is my uh, recommendation uh, to ask you to approve the guaranteed maximum price for Creekside Elementary and to the addition of Lake Creek High School as presented. And I'll, I'll be happy when I see four hands go up and I'll turn around and tell Pogue, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot, to, a lot of work to do in a short period of time. I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Any questions? I just have uh, one comment to echo the sentiments from um, Chris and Dr. Morrison uh, being a part of the interview process and being close to this from the get-go, uh, Chris and I talk a few times a week about this. I do know the, how much um, we, we've talked about Pogue and Huckabee, and we thank them for, for their cooperation throughout, as well as the subs. I know it was a challenge, but I know it was a challenge on, on you two as well, our leadership team, and, and Chris, to get that a uh, lot of late nights. And I want you to know that it does go appreciated, and uh, we're thankful for that. And in saying that, I'd like to move to approve the guaranteed maximum price as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Dennison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. Luke, Luke, Luke that's your cue. That's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to 7B. Uh, consider approval of the MISD Culture Creed as presented. Thank you, President Turner. So as our team comes forward, I'd I uh, want to say a few words about the work that has uh, gone on this year that uh, accompanies the work that went on last year. Uh, last year, as we launched our new strategic plan, uh, under goal four, there was a commitment to think about our culture uh, within the district and our focus around having a culture of respect uh, so that all employees, uh, whether they are uh, on the senior leadership team, leading a campus, teaching in our classroom, supporting teaching and learning, or through any of our number of support staff positions, every employee of Montgomery ISD feels valued and respected for the important role that they provide in servicing our close to 10,000 students. The idea of our culture of respect uh, also extended to making sure that individuals within our school district could feel uh, comfortable in a psychological safety of sharing uh, when they have differences of opinions or that they uh, think that there's different ways that we can improve our school district and that every employee feels comfortable bringing those ideas forward that makes us a better school district. And that when any individual employee felt that they were in an environment that was not respectful, that they had the opportunity to uh, seek help and assistance so that uh, every one of our employees does in fact feel like they work in a respectful uh, uh, division, office, school, or central services. 
and that work was done by a multi-stakeholder group. It took the entire year, but when that culture of respect was brought forward, it wasn't my document, it wasn't the board's document, it was our employees' document, uh, and we've launched that this year, and we've gotten a lot of positive praise from our employees. During that time period of, uh, of which uh, President Turner served as the board representative of that culture of respect, there were a lot of conversations from our employees about how we extend that to our community. And as we had those conversations, it really uh, got into some amazing conversations about how we treat our community is how we would hope and expect our community to treat uh, our employees within Montgomery ISD. And as Justin and I met with various stakeholder groups uh, talking about culture, talking about respect, talking about civility, of which sometimes across our country and especially at school board meetings, uh, even close by us, you don't always see that displayed. And that if for no other important reason other than we have, we must show that modeling of how responsible adults can disagree and how we can come to a better place, launch us on this pathway that ultimately is the document that we're gonna ask you to consider tonight, which is our culture creed. So I will ask uh, Justin Moreno to introduce uh, our three leaders of this initiative, uh, but they speak for many, many voices uh, across <coughs> Montgomery ISD have led us to this pathway tonight. Thank you, Dr. Morrison, and that is one of the aspects of our culture respect that we're very proud of is that is the the cross section of individuals that were involved in that process and it, and how organically it happened through conversations with campus staff members, district department members, and that committee was led by these three individuals, Courtney Dyer, Caitlin Nichols, and Jessica Grace. So we called that committee back together for um, what we are referring to as the culture creed, which is the extension of the culture of respect. So I'd like to ask the three of them to um, share some information with you about that process and present to you our culture creed. Well, thank you, Justin, Dr. Morrison, and board um, for this opportunity to share with you an update about our MISD um, Culture of Respect Initiative and to uh, share with you a proposal uh, for pr approval. But before we begin, I'd like to introduce to you our committee leaders. Um, joining me are um, Caitlin Nichols from Human Resources and Jessica Grace from Communications. So as you recall, in the fall of 2021, we embarked on our MISD Culture of Respect Initiative journey. This initiative was put into motion because in our endeavors to become the premier school district of the state of Texas, it was important that we, for all of us to become and make sure the MISD could continue to be a place where our employees not only wanted to work, but also felt like their contributions to the district mattered. From this vision, from this vision, a culture of respect committee was formed. This committee consisted of several MIC employees from across the district with representation from all campuses, departments, and board. The committee worked throughout the year to de develop what they believed a culture of respect should mean and look like at MISD. This work consisted of collecting input and feedback from committee members as well as providing all employees the opportunity to share their thoughts and ideas centering around the culture of respect initiative. From these efforts, we were able to define a MISD culture of respect and the MISD Culture of Respect Staff Compact was created. At the beginning of the school year, MISD employees were given a copy of the Culture of Respect Compact and asked to sign, pledging to uphold the values stated. From the beginning of the Culture of Respect Initiative, we knew we wanted to be sure to something that not only benefited and impacted our employees, we wanted to be sure it was something we could eventually develop and branch out to our parents, students, and community. Jessica is going to share with you the work that our committee has been doing this year to bring us to the next phase of our Culture of Respect initiative. Hello. As a member of the MISD communications team, I help to organize and participate in Dr. Morrison's meetings with community groups, including Montgomery area realtors, faith-based leaders, business owners, the Chamber of Commerce, as well as campus PTAs and PTOs and student groups. Beginning last summer and throughout the start of the current school year, as we gathered feedback from these groups regarding the current social climate in school districts and communities around the country, it became a desire that we could develop a sort of community agreement. Our community is rapidly growing and there is a reason that MISD is attractive and that people want to move here. So in partnership with these community groups, we started a formally written agreement that was poured over and evaluated. 
this agreement was in paragraph form, and I, I believe it began as like a seven-page document, more like a it thesis. It began as a five-page document that I wrote yes. after all of our conversations. I gave it to Justin to edit. Then it became a seven-page document. Then it document. became seven. <laughs> I just want to be so clear about that. it was more that. like a thesis <laughs> that we narrowed down to two pages. <laughs> And through our communication, it was realized that we needed to have a living, usable document that members of our community could recognize easily and utilize effectively. In consolidating the thoughts of the original agreement, a culture creed was then presented, a one-page document with bullet points stating what Montgomery ISD believes and modeling the language that we hope to instill in our students, employees, parents, and community when we engage together. As we grow, there are things we want to ensure are known about Montgomery ISD. To those who are new, we welcome you and we are glad you found a home here. Please join us in our mission to be a community and school district that stands on the foundation of mutual respect and is molding our students to be independent thinkers that are respectful and live in civility with those around them. This creed is our commitment to the way that we will behave and interact with our stakeholders and partners as we strive to be premier in all ways. The initial draft was created and shared with these community groups and feedback was thoroughly considered and documented. In addition, we offered three opportunities for members of the Culture of Respect Committee to attend meetings in person and on Zoom in order to hear about the development process and view the creed that was in draft at that time. You can see the version that was brought to the committee on the screen now. We shared this discussing examples of use if adopted and asked their recommendation for improvement and ideas for implementation. First, we asked what they liked about it. We always have to start with the positive. The feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Staff members believe that it encourages diplomacy. They liked that it was one page, easily referenced document, and that it made it clear that Montgomery ISD aims to prioritize communication and conflict resolution. The fact that it would create consistency across the district from campus to campus was highly appreciated, and they truly felt that the use of this document would validate the work that was done last year in developing a culture of respect campaign. As Courtney stated, the initial plan was that last year's work would be phase one of implementation, and we would aim to spread the expectation beyond just our staff, but also to interactions with others. The second bullet on the creed was highly valued, recognizing that every student has a story, every family has a need, and everyone has high value. Secondly, we asked for suggestions for improvement. There was agreement that maybe some bullets were too wordy, and if we wanted this to be stated easily and possibly memorized by students, it might be good to simplify it. In addition, the B1 team verbiage from the initial campaign was missing, and the desire to add value to all members was mentioned. We were very thankful for the constructive recommendations that were made, as there is no doubt that we will need the buy-in of all MISD employees if this is going to take <coughs> root. The final part of gathering feedback was to ask for th thoughts regarding implementation district-wide. We were certain that if this is going to be implemented in every classroom on every campus and at every level of leadership, it was necessary to ask our committee what they envisioned a rollout to look like. It was recommended that it be added to the parent and employee handbooks and requiring signatures from parents that require signatures from parents and employees, as well as having our students sign it after it is taught to them. There was agreement that the creed could be placed at the top page in a new family's information packet when they visit the school or meet with the registrar. This is an assurance or meeting norms, and it was suggested that it also be stated or read at the start of campus, department, and parent meetings, as well in taught, as taught and shared in substitute training. In all, agree, it was agreed that MISD would need to saturate our campuses, website, and parent communication with this, so it is seen everywhere and adopted as our expectation, mostly as MISD's commitment to mutual respect. Upon adoption, it was also mentioned that the school board might consider beginning meetings with the creed being read. As for social media use, there was discussion of community members being able to reference this when they see something on social media that could be harmful, inaccurate, or disrespectful, whether it's directed towards a teacher, a principal, a campus, or even a student. Having this graphic in their possession is something they can easily comment with, <coughs> reminding the poster or commenter of what MISD is committed to in regards to conflict resolution. This graphic could hopefully encourage the concerned individual to go directly to the source with mutual respect and a desire to understand, and instead of taking concerns to social media where a teacher, employee, or student may be quickly and harshly judged by the court of public opinion. After meeting with our Culture of Respect Committee and evaluating the feedback shared, the draft was edited and then also shared at a district leadership meeting of principals and department directors and assistant superintendents. We provided the background of development 
much like we have with you tonight, as well as a QR code to a feedback form that allowed our admin team members to think on the implementation and then let us know what they thought. We showed them a shortened version that you can see here, and the agreement was that it lost some valuable meaning and vocabulary when some statements were shortened. It also removed the specification of students, parents, and employees. It was determined that the draft here met the feedback received and kept the point strong and vocabulary present. I could read it for you. I think you can read <laughs> it. Um, but it basically states what our belief system would be um, in any interaction, any conflict resolution, any time that a student or an adult um, is in a disagreement, understanding that disagreement does not have to be disrespectful. It was at this meeting with MISD leaders that we shared the idea from our committee to implement a student version of the document. We are calling this a student creed. There will be autonomy on the way in which campuses implement these statements into their morning announcements or daily interactions with students. Feedback received included making the statements I statements to provide student ownership and responsibility for one's words and actions. The original version as a culture creed is too long, and it needs to be something that can be easily referenced by teachers and administrators in their interactions with students. The recommendation was made to provide color coding for the elementary level, and that maybe we could develop hand signs to be implemented for our younger students. Here you can see the two versions of the student creed for both secondary and elementary grades. We want to share the belief that it's very important to have this district statement that unifies students, their families, and our employees across all campuses. In the coming year, we will be taking teachers from all six elementary schools and opening a new school. In addition, when a teacher is moved from one campus to another or a student is transferred, this culture creed and the student version that accompanies it will provide a foundation and expectation. In Montgomery ISD, no matter what school or office you are in, and no matter how much we grow, we are one team with a commitment to kindness, civility, and mutual respect. In addition to the collaborative desires of our community stakeholders and employees to add this creed to MISD's culture of respect initiative, this creed also supports the TEA requirements under safe and supportive schools to provide a positive school climate. School climate is defined as the quality and character of school life as reflected in its norms, goals, values, interpersonal relationships, teaching and learning practices and organizational structures as experienced by all, including the students, parents, school personnel and members of the community. Every member of the school community contributes to the positive school climate, allowing all individuals to feel engaged and respected and working together to develop and contribute a shared vision. This culture creed would be that shared vision that supports both the personal and academic development of students. It will require a collaborative and deliberate effort by every member of our community, school community. This creed provides vocabulary that our students need in order to grow into civil and respectful members of society. These words can support a student when they need to say to a teacher, I take responsibility for the way I spoke to you and behaved in class. Or even a teacher that might need to say, I take responsibility for the way I reacted today, not seeking first to understand you. These words can empower students to say to a peer, I have high value and you are not treating me with mutual respect. And that life lesson to be able to stand up for yourself, knowing that you will be supported by your teachers, administrators, and a school di district that stands behind the messaging they are putting out is invaluable. Engaging this way with our students is necessary as we produce the next generation of business owners, parents, and adults in our community. To share our timeline of a rollout, should you approve this tonight, Human Resources Representative Caitlin Nichols is here to share. The beginning of the 23-24 school year will be here before we know it. So what are our next steps? Tonight, we are seeking your approval of the Culture Creed. Pending approval, we will begin the process of placing the order for posters and handouts for each campus and department. This creed would be posted in every conference and meeting room, including this boardroom in poster size. In addition, it would be in every classroom on each campus, and we would provide a copy to each teacher to post where their students will see and be able to use it. The order would be placed before the end of May. The MISD leadership retreat is scheduled for July 20th and 21st. At the retreat, we will present this creed to all district leaders, sharing ideas for how they can roll it out on their individual campuses. 
The Back to School Summer Summit will take place August 2nd through 4th for all MISD staff. This information will be prevalent throughout the summit with breakout sessions available that pertain to culture of respect, including customer service training that will be facilitated by Jessica Grace in partnership with the Montgomery Chick-fil-A management team. The culture creed will be sent out to parents and employees by email. It will be shared in the student registration paperwork through Skyward, as well as the annual personnel forms that every employee completes. Prior to the start of school, the creed will be posted in the areas mentioned, and we will be sure to order additional copies for each campus to place in common areas as they see fit. In addition, a graphic will be posted on the MISD website and made available for digital use. It will also be shared with our parent organizations so that they can post on their pages and use in their meetings if they wish. As Jessica said, saturation will be the goal to ensure that the creed can be seen and applied across Montgomery ISD. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions or comments? I think it's brilliant. I would like to say thank you so much for all of your hard work and I am so proud of our district and community for having this be so important. Um, it just tells a lot, shows a lot of what we're about, and I'm so glad it's going to be consistent across the district. And I'm very happy that this is what's on the agenda tonight because it means a lot to me, the culture of, of our schools and our district. I think the fact that you included the community, I mean, it, it creates a culture throughout the community, the district being the leader for that, but including the chamber and, and other groups that it, that it just, I think that's, that's the depth of something like this because it does take, uh, we can we can preach it on campus, but it needs to permeate into the homes and into the community as well. Anything Mr. Kirby, else? I'd just like to add on to that. Uh, the meetings with our stakeholder groups have been phenomenal. Uh, everyone is dealing with a lot of the same challenges where, again, just across the country, uh, whether it's business, even our faith-based leaders shared the lack of civility. Uh, and again, we're going to have issues, we're going to have challenges, we're going to have disagreements. Uh, we deal with important things in the school district. What is more important than how we educate our close to 10,000 students? Uh, but I just want to be very clear on this, and that is that the culture creed is really our commitment to our community. We can't ask anyone in the community to do any of this because they're not our employees. But it is our hope that if we model this in our interactions with our parents, in our interactions with our community, uh, as we model it for our students, that we can do our part, Mr. Kirby, as you just said, to help ensure that this is uh, the culture of this amazing community. And uh, Ms. Grace, what is it uh, when you go to Chick-fil-A that they say? <laughs> my pleasure. Yes, and that's <laughs> why they're going to be helping us with the training because it is, my pleasure yeah. <laughs> our pleasure to serve it's our honor to serve our students uh, but if we do this well and we do it right and the implementation is so important I think it is going to be uh, something that a lot of districts across the country are going to want to emulate all right with that being said is there a motion to approve the MISD culture creed as presented I'll make a motion to right. approve the culture creed as presented thank you Ms. Horton is there a second second Mr. Wynn, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, moving on to information items, 8A. Thank you. Carson. Thank you, President Turner. Uh, on information 8A, uh, as we are monitoring things at the state legislature, uh, there are things that oftentimes find their way into uh, legislation, and so we try to get out in front of them. And, Sometimes, not always, some of those things actually end up in some funding, and so uh, then we really try to get in front of that. Uh, when it's something that you're already doing, then that's even more exciting. So uh, Information 8A is a board policy that articulates something that we've tried to do now for two years, which is as we have rapidly, under an amazing technology department here in Montgomery ISD, not just try to put more technology in the hands of our teachers and students, but to reinforce the concept of being a good digital citizen. Uh, there are so many different ways that technology can empower quality teaching and learning and uh, really open up the entire uh, knowledge base of humanity to our students. 
but it could also not be the most productive tool if used poorly. And so we try to reinforce to our students, again, to be good digital citizens. Uh, we use uh, different uh, methodologies to do that, different uh, groups that have expertise. And uh, so this policy simply reinforces that our commitment uh, to reinforce digital citizenship across all of our uh, schools, across Montgomery ISD, and to commit uh, to doing that with uh, vendors that the state approves. Great. Any, anything else? Any questions on that? All right, moving on to 8B, Student Health Advisory Council Annual Report. And this is Dr. Busby to talk about SHAC. Yes, so each year about this time, we get to give you an annual update of the activities of our School Health Advisory Council. And so before I get into it, I also want to give a shout out to somebody in the audience. Y'all want to wave to Darby Lockridge. She has um, been serving as our chair this year for the SHAC, so she really has been leading the meetings and been doing a great job um, providing some leadership to the council. And I'm the district liaison uh, to keep that connection, so we're going to share um, what the shack does so just a reminder that the shack is a group um, it's a varied group so we have some people who are district employees we have community members but it is a council that should be majority of parents on the committee and the purpose is for them to uh, for the district to ensure that we have uh, community values that are reflected in our health education and so it's all about um, kids living healthy lives and you know happy healthy children are able to learn better and so that's really the purpose of the committee so the committee meets uh, four times per year and this year these are the dates that we met we try to meet two times in the first semester and twice in the second semester at each one of our meetings this is um, kind of the agenda we um, always review the number of uh, committee members we look at who's in there from parents community volunteers uh, introduce any new members um, and try to keep track of that. We um, have had kind of low attendance this year, so this has kind of been um, something we're going to be targeting as we recruit some new uh, parent volunteers to serve on the committee. Um, district updates are provided. We have di district representatives there that give updates from the counselors, nurses, um, PE department, and child nutrition. Uh, we also, uh, the committee is charged with reviewing any new curriculum materials and giving um, recommendations there if there is a curriculum that needs to be adopted. And then we have some time for open business for any relevant topics um, that we need to discuss. So here are some of the activities that Chuck was involved in, and you probably remember hearing about this in the fall, um, the snack. Uh, which was led um, by our child nutrition director, uh, Lena. She works with the student council, um, which is Student Nutrition Advisory Council, and they put on a walkathon. Well, Shaq got involved with it the first year to just kind of help promote. Well, this year uh, we added a little bit more to it, and we added some vendors that got to target um, health related um, activities. Participants got to visit the different vendor booths, learn about more information, purchase items, different things like that. So it kind of became a health fair and a walkathon together. And so we're hoping to continue that effort and continue to make this an even bigger event. Uh, a big focus this year was the wellness plan. As a district, we are required to have a district wellness uh, plan that re reflects how we're going to have nutrition guidelines and wellness goals. And so the wellness plan is, uh, does cover these topics. We have nutrition uh, promotion, nutrition education, nutrition guidelines, physical activity, and then other um, school-based activities. So this is a plan that the SHAC committee got into groups, reviewed the goals, see how we were doing, see if they needed to make any adjustments. Um, including in that three-year review is something called a triennial assessment. And so what that means is that each of the campuses kind of rated how they were doing on the activities related to those goals, and then we put that report together. So that triennial assessment and the updated wellness plan, those are both uh, posted on our SHAC website. You have heard uh, about our Supporting Our Students Committee. 
So this was important um, work that we felt we did this year. The activities of that committee were very much in line with SHAC goals, and so we brought it to the SHAC for feedback. Um, we discussed that idea of giving that student survey that would provi provide parents with information about things that students were dealing with, and like you know the mental health, the substance abuse, growing up in a uh, digital age, um, all of those things are things that we covered. And so sh with the SHAC support, we moved forward with that committee and all of the planning activities, and we were able to um, launch those parent nights this year and had three different parent nights covering those topics. Um, they were well attended. We would have liked even more attendance, but it, you know, for first year, we felt it was well attended and well received. We got great feedback. So we do hope to continue the efforts um, of this committee. After we started working on it and kind of thinking about what next steps are that, it's very much in line with um, what the SHAC efforts are as well. So we hope to kind of move some of those activities from the SOS committee to uh, the SHAC committee next year. But I'm very, very thankful to our SOS committee for helping us get all of those activities uh, kicked off and the support of the SHAC. Um, one of the other things that's very important for SHAC is to review curriculum materials and give their input or their recommendations. They do not adopt the curriculum, but they do give their input um, on those materials. We did not have any new material that was adopted this school year, so we didn't really have to go through those activities. However, there is a proclamation 2024 um, that we'll be doing this year. It's science curriculum. And so right now, um, the legislation says that any programs that we adopt to instruct students on specific topics are required to be reviewed by the SHAC. So as we look at the different curriculum, if, um, we'll bring it to the SHAC and they'll review any content related to any of these topics, human sexuality, health and nutrition, substance use, mental health, and suicide prevention. And so SHAC will then, um, after hearing about the materials, they will provide a recommendation on which ones they feel best fit our community. And so they'll recommend those. So we do have some spots available for new members. Uh, so we do um, are going to be recruiting for that. We are asking our principals to help us in that effort. We wanna make sure that each campus has some representation. Uh, so we are asking them to uh, help with that effort. If you are some, know someone who would like to be on it or someone here that would like to be on it, uh, just contact the campus principal, let them know you're interested or you can contact me directly as well too. And any questions about the check? Any questions or comments? All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Dr. Busby. All right. Moving on to information item C, monthly financials report. You might notice Mr. Lund's big smile because that doesn't get directed to you, does it, Chris? Who, who does it get directed to? <laughs> Our new chief financial officer, Mr. Davidson. So. All right, so we're just going to be moving on. Yes. All right. Well, any questions? Any questions on the financial report? Okay. Well, the time is 8:02. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>